huge update in the Kratom story as the Drug Enforcement Administration has just put out a withdrawal of notice of intent to temporarily place mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine into Schedule 1. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. Uh, the Drug Enforcement Administration Department of Justice is the agency. Action, withdrawal of notice of intent, solicitation of comments. <clears throat> In the summary, on October 31st, 2016, the Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, published in the Federal Register a notice of intent to temporarily place mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, which are the main psychoactive constituents of the plant Mitrogena spaciosa, also referred to as Kratom, into Schedule 1, pursuant to the temporary scheduling provisions of the Controlled Substances Act. Since publishing that notice, DEA has received numerous comments from members of the public challenging the scheduling action and requesting that the agency consider those comments and accompanying information before taking further action. In addition, the DEA were, <clears throat> will receive from the Food and Drug Administration a scientific and medical evaluation and scheduling recommendation for these substances, which DEA previously requested. And that's the end of page one. The DEA will, has already requested this. Uh, from the FDA, I, I'm not sure when exactly they first asked the FDA for some more scientific backing for, uh, um, you know, for to build a case to uh, ban the substance. But it's ever since the state started looking at it, the DEA has asked the. FDA. Moving on to page two, DEA is therefore taking the following actions. DEA is withdrawing the August 31st, 2016 notice of intent and soliciting comments from the public regarding the scheduling of mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine under the Controlled Substances Act. Dates. The notice of intent that was published on August 31st, 2016 is withdrawn as of, and it says insert date of publication, meaning that this was printed out prior to the release of it. The comment period would be open until December 1st, 2016. All comments for public record must be submitted electronically or in writing in accordance uh, with the procedures outlined below. Electronic comments must be submitted and written comments must be postmarked on or before December 1st, 2016. Commenters should be aware that the electronic federal docket management system will not accept comments after 11.59 p.m. Eastern Time on the last day of the comment period. <clears throat> Please note that if you previously submitted a comment via email or regular mail following the August 31st, 2016 notice, that comment is being considered by the DEA. It is not necessary to resubmit the same comment unless you wish to provide additional information or you wish to have your comment posted for public view in accordance with the instructions provided below. Uh, addresses. To ensure proper handling of comments, please reference docket number DEA442W on all correspondence, including any attachments. Electronic comments. The Drug Enforcement Administration encourages that all comments be submitted electronically through the federal e-rulemaking portal, which provides the ability to type short comments directly into the comment field on the web page or attach a file for lengthier comments. Please go to and it tells you the website. Upon completion of your submission, you will receive a comment tracking uh, number for your comment. Please be aware that submitted comments are not instantaneously available for public view on regulation.gov. If you have received a comment tracking number, your comment has been successfully submitted and there is no need to submit the same comment. Paper comments. Paper comments that duplicate the electronic submissions are not necessarily and are discouraged. Should you wish to mail a paper comment in lieu of an electronic comment, it should be sent via regular or express mail to Drug, uh, Admin Drug Enforcement Administration, attention DEA Federal Registrar. I'm going to include all these addresses below. So, uh, anyway. For further information, contact Michael J. Lewis, Diversion Control Division, Drug Enforcement Administration. And again, mailing address. 
Supplementary information. Posting of public comments. Please note that all comments received in response to this notice are considered part of the public record. If you previously submitted a comment via email or regular mail following the August 31, 2016 notice, that comment is being considered by the DEA. It is not necessarily to not necessary to resubmit the same comment unless you wish to provide additional information or you wish to have your comment posted for public view in accordance with the instructions provided below. All comments received in response to this notice of opportunity to comment will, unless reasonably uh, cause is given, reasonable cause is given, all these comments will be made available by the DEA for public inspection online at the regulations.gov. Such information includes personal identification information such as your name address etc voluntary submitted by the voluntarily submitted by the commentator or commenter i'm sorry the freedom of information act foia applies to all comments received if you want to submit personal if you want to submit personal identifying information such as your name address etc as part of your comment but do not want to want it to be made publicly available you must include the phrase personal identifying information in the first paragraph of your comment. You must also place all the personal identifying information you do not want made publicly available in your first paragraph of your comment and identify what information you want redacted. If you want to submit confidential business information as part of your comment but do not want it to be made publicly available, you must include the phrase confidential business information in the first paragraph of your comment. You must also prominently identify the confidential business information to be redacted within the comment. Comments con containing personal inf identifying information and confidential business information identified as directed above will generally be made publicly available in redacted form. And it, it, if a comment has so much personal identifying information or confidential business information that it cannot be effectively redacted, all or part of that comment may not be made publicly available. Comments posted to uh, regulations.gov may include any personal, identify, uh, any personal identifying information included in the text of your electronic submission that is not identified as directed above as personal or... And moving to the next page, the background. Withdrawal of notice of intent. The Controlled Substances Act, CSA, contains a temporary scheduling provision, 21 U.S.C. 811-H, pursuant to which the DEA administrator may temporarily place a substance in Schedule 1 where he finds that doing so is necessary to avoid an imminent hazard to the public safety. The provisions of the CSA require the DEA to publish a notice in the Federal Registrar of its intent to issue temporary scheduling order at least 30 days before issuing any such order. DA published such a notice of intent on August 31st, 2016, with respect to mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, which are the main psychoactive constituents of the plant commonly known as Kratom, 81FR59929. In response to the notice of intent, the DEA received numerous comments from the public on mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, including comments offering their opinions regarding the pharmacological effects of these substances. To allow consideration of these comments as well as others received on or before December 1st, 2016, DEA has decided to withdraw the August 31st, 2016 Notice of Intent published at 81 FR 59929. DEA has also requested that the FDA expedite its scientific and medical evaluation and, sc and scheduling recommendation for these substances which DEA previously requested in accordance with 21 U.S.C. 811-B. <clears throat> and then down below they have some, uh, some footnotes. Number one, the Attorney General has delegated her function under the CSA to the DEA Administrator. Number two, Section 811-B provides that the scientific and medical evaluation and scheduling recommendation shall be conducted by the Secretary of Health and Human Services. HHS. This function has been delegated to the Assist Assistant Secretary for Health, 
58 FR 35460 1993. Within HHS, the FDA has primary responsibility for conducting the evaluation and making the Accordingly, the August 31st, 2016 Notice of Intent to temporarily place mitrogenine and 7-hydroxide mitrogenine in Schedule 1 is withdrawn. Mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine therefore remain, as has been the case, non-controlled substances under federal law. Consideration of public comments and FDA's analysis. With respect to mitrogenine and 7-hydroxide mitrogenine, DEA will consider all public comments received under the above pro, uh, procedures, as well as FDA's scientific and medical evaluation and scheduling recommendations for these substances. Once DEA has received and considered all of this information, DEA will decide whether to proceed with permanent scheduling of mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, or both permanent and temporary scheduling of these substances. A permanent scheduling process. As the CSA provides, if the DEA determines that the medical and scientific facts contained in the FDA scheduling evaluation, along with all other relevant data and information, constitute substan uh, substantial evidence of potential for abuse and support permanent scheduling of mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, DEA will publish in the Federal Register a notice of proposed rulemaking, which will give uh, interested members of the public an additional opportunity to submit comments and request a hearing. As provided in 21 U.S.C. 811a, permanent scheduling rules shall be made on the record after opportunity for a hearing pursuant to the rulemaking procedures prescribed by 5 U.S.C. 533, 556, and 557. And on them footnotes, uh, number three, under some state and local laws, Kratom and or its constituents, mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine, are currently listed as controlled substances or otherwise subject to control. Nothing in this publication alters the validity of such laws or any pending state efforts to implement those laws or enact new laws controlling these substances. Number four, in a permanent scheduling actions, uh, the DEA reviews FDA evaluation and rescheduling recommendation. The FDA determines as to scientific and medical matters are binding on DEA, 21 U.S.C. 811b. Temporary Scheduling Process The pendency of permanent scheduling proceedings for a substance does not preclude a simultaneous or subsequent order to temporarily control that substance. If DEA finds in light of FDA scientific and medical evaluation and after consideration of all public comments and other relevant information that, based on the criteria of Section 811H, temporary placement of mitrogenine and 7-hydroxymitrogenine in Schedule 1, is necessary to avoid an imminent hazard to the public safety. DEA will follow the statutory procedures for issuing such temporary scheduling order. As indicated above, before issuing such a temporary scheduling order, DEA would be required to publish in Federal Register a new Notice of Intent. Now, this was dated October 6th, 2016. Chuck Rosenberg, Acting Administrator of the DEA. And that was the letter. So, what do I take? What's my takeaway on this? Um, well, the DEA heard you loud and clear. And now they're giving uh, the people and the scientists and the FDA a chance to hurry along and get some more comments to them. Um, <clears throat> and I think it's important that if you already haven't done that, do it. I'll provide you with the addresses and information below. Um, meanwhile, Kratom is apparently not illegal unless you live in a state that has made it illegal uh, or any local laws that make it illegal. I guess nothing has changed there. So <clears throat> stay tuned for the next step which would be seeing what they're going to do, which it doesn't look like we're going to find out anything from the DEA until sometime in 2017. My guess is it's probably not going to be until uh, sp after spring thaws out or something. I'm not sure. But uh, say, all I can say is that, you know, direct action got their attention, and now the ball's in our court. <laughs>